Um, oh, frame problem. Yuck. We already talked about the qualification problem, um, which is uh, how to set the preconditions for an action. Like, you know, I turn the key. Is my car going to start? Ah, it's so annoying to how to represent the right preconditions for that. Um, some people, if you're a philosopher, you get really in a knot about these kinds of things. Um, so how to represent preconditions. In AI, these days, we just put probabilities in everything, and now we're happy. Um, there are also, some people call this the frame problem. There are three different things that people mean when they're talking about the frame problem. One is the qualification problem. One is the representational frame problem. How do you represent an action? I think that's pretty silly, uh, so we're not going to really, so. I mean, it's a uh, representational frame. How do you represent an action? So if I do something, what changes in the world? Do I have to write down all the things that don't change? My choice would be no. Phew, we solved the representational frame problem. OK. Uh, the inferential frame problem, this is like the ramification problem, uh, just in the context of planning. Um, how do you figure out what the new state of the world is? So we have some representation of the state of the world. We've got some representation of an action. They meet. We compute the successor state somehow. Um, do I, when I say that I'm going about to walk forward, do I, do I, I would like a representation of action that does not require me to infer that all my socks are still in the sock drawer in my house. Right? Even though it's true that like at time t plus 1, they are all there still. We want some kind of default that says that Unless I said it changed, it's still the same. So that's called the frame problem. It's like, what's, what's the, when you're talking about an action, well, how do you frame that? Uh, everything outside the frame maybe stays constant, and only the local things, and this isn't beautiful the way the universe works, only the local things actually change. In fact, due to the speed of light, like we can bound the amount of stuff that might feasibly change when we take an action. It's the, like God is helping us out with the inferential frame problem here. Very handy of him. Uh, so anyway, people sometimes talk about the frame problem. So now you've heard of it. Basically, I, I don't worry about it ever. But some people do, especially philosophers. OK, so here's strips. This is what you need to know for Simon 3. Strips. Everything's going to be super simple. We've got this logical world where things are true or false. Every, every action is going to have a name, like move. Move this block from here to there. And it's going to have preconditions. Well, block is here, and it's clear. There's nothing on top of it. The destination is clear. I'm going to remove from being true. I'm going to make false that the block is here, and I'm going to make true that it is there. It is no longer here. It is there. And it's no longer clear that the destination is clear. And it's now true that the source is clear. So this super simple representation is called Strips. So it's super simple. Technically speaking, if you want to get down to brass tacks, this is called an operator schema. And when you fill in constants for the variables, it becomes an actual operator or action. One of the nice things about it is it neatly deals with the the frame problem by saying these are the only things that change. Everything else in the world is just the same. One of the nasty things about strips is it makes something called the closed world assumption. Um, yeah. Um, and not just, not, yeah, you can't add anything to the world and you start off knowing about everything in the world. Strips is like vaguely descended from first order logic. Um, and in first order logic, remember, you start off with all these constants that represent everything. So, like, you meet some new person, you have to like invent a new constant symbol for them, I guess, uh, which normal logic doesn't handle. And strips doesn't handle it either. So, that's super annoying. You, you want to talk about an embarrassment for AI. Strips can't even represent the ls command in Unix, right? Because like, you have no idea what might come back from an ls. Might be some new files that you didn't know existed. Maybe someone else wrote into the directory. So, 
<sighs> it's a little annoying. So strips is quite limited in what it can do. But it's, it was good enough for that fancy printer I showed you last time. Um, it's, it's, it can do some stuff. So you're going to write strips planner for assignment three. And that's strips. That's it. Um, here's an example. Um, you start off with an initial state. You're at home. The hardware store sells a drill. The supermarket sells milk and bananas. And you have a goal that you're at home and you have a drill and milk and bananas. And whoa, we've got some actions we can do. We can go from here to there. And you notice I didn't write the add list and delete list separately. Different people do that different ways. You should be comfortable with both. Uh, I have this buy thing where if I'm at a store, I can buy X if store sells X. So that's nice. So using these actions, we can plan from this world to that world. How nice. And in fact, if we build a planner, then any world that's describable in strips, we can plan in, which is handy. So that's called a strips planner. These days, people use a language called PDDL for planning domain description language, but it's basically strips. So everybody get this? So can we do our assignment in PDDL? No. You've got to do it in the language that I give you the stuff in. You don't want to parse PDDL. It's nasty. You're very happy that we give you this simple language. Preconditions and effects. So On the previous slide, I think I called them preconditions and an add list and delete list. Okay. What are yours, then? But these are add, that's an add, that's a delete, because it's got a not in front of it. Yep. Yep. The state of the world is a collection of these things. And what I, so that's a great question. I, I didn't really talk about this. The, uh, what we do in strips, Tyler. Sorry, I'm trying to explain. Awesome. What's the question? And then you tell me your answer. I said, uh, what if fear is there? What if, oh, yeah. Yeah. So what's the answer? Well, I was just saying it, it's not really going to be an issue because, like, if, like, we're already, we're deleting that we're here, but then adding that we're here again. So your plan will get more costly, yeah. but you'll be in the same state. Yeah. So that probably won't be in an optimal plan. There are even worse things that can happen. So um, in strips, there's no typing, right? So uh, this is a very, this was the first time I taught this class at UNH. Someone said, hey, can we go from here to bananas? Can we go bananas? <laughs> yes. You just substitute constant symbols in for the variables, right? And you end up with these actions that like make no sense. Like I'm now at bananas. Yep. I'm not at home anymore. Yeah. You totally can do that in strips. Yes. You totally can. In PDDL, they added typing so that like you could have certain things be locations and that sort of thing. <laughs> um, you can certainly simulate that here by requiring here be a location as a precondition. Here and there, so that you know you can fix that kind of thing. But in in you like it? Yeah, you know, computers just have no compunction about thinking the craziest thoughts. Uh, what if I were in a future state where I was buying a drill at the milk? Um, yeah, it's sometimes. I mean, you'd be amazed how many actions are applicable in the initial state. And that's the milestone, uh, is for you guys to list all the applicable actions. And you know, you'd, you'd be surprised how many applicable actions there can be. There can be like you know, 30 actions applicable, even though you're like, wait, there are only two of these actions. But no, these are not actually actions. These are operator schema. And that's one of the things that I think I give as a hint for the assignment is I recommend that you grind, you grind down your schema into ground level actions, first thing. So ground out your, your operators so that you just have, instead of just one thing, you have like a zillion things that are going from every possible constant to every other possible constant. Just ground, ground, ground everything out. And then when you're doing search, um, you don't have to worry about 
trying to uh, instantiate the schemas because that that's you know takes a while. So it's it's better just instantiating them all once up front, and that's called grounding out. Just like the Herbrand base, remember I mentioned grounding before. That's why because here we are. I'm recommending that you ground. And in fact, in the in, there's they have a they have a planning competition every year at the one of the, the AI planning conference, and some sometimes on the big problems. Some of the planners don't run out of time to solve the problem. They run out of memory because they try and ground out everything, just like I'm recommending you guys do, and then they blow memory. Uh, so a, a fully state-of-the-art planner would do lazy grounding, but it's much simpler to just ground everything out. Progression. Yeah, so as you might expect, one way to, to do strips planning is just the same way you did assignment one. And that's, it's, so you start at the initial state, you branch on all applicable actions, an action is applicable if the preconditions hold in the current state. You delete, to get the successor state, you delete the deletes and add the adds. And when all the goal atoms are true, you're at the goal. So it's just like assignment one redux. And that's, in fact, assignment three is basically assignment one, except now you're doing it with strips. So this is called progression, because you're starting from the initial state and going out. Mm, what a good question. Um, no. Really? Truly. Um, strips, oh, I, I should talk more about the closed world assumption. Um, it's not just that we know all the, con we know all the constants of the world. It's actually that we know the, the, the status of every possible atom, every possible literal. Um, so in strips, we make this representational assumption. We only represent the true things. So I showed you the initial state. This is actually the initial state. So you might wonder, is at hardware store true in the initial state? It's not mentioned. Is it true or false? In strips, we make this closed world assumption that we know the status of everything. And we, we write down everything that's true, and everything that's not written down is false. Very intuitive, but it is an assumption. You may uh, maybe there's an initial state where you don't actually know where you are. Can't represent that in strips. So everything is either known to be true or known to be false. So we wouldn't hurt ourselves by specifying not at all in the initial state. It's redundant. Yeah. It's it is that's that that literal is false in this right. and with this initial state. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Um, new this year, I am requiring you to handle negative goal conditions. Um, we didn't have to do this last year, so Matt's up updating the reference solution right now. Um, your input has a uh, negative goal list uh, so that you can search for a goal where you're like, not at home. Like, I don't care where I am as long as I'm not at home. Like, that, that's going to be a legitimate goal for you guys. Exactly. Not at bananas. Yeah, going bananas? Yeah. Yeah, crows crazy computers. Did I answer your question? Um, now you have another one. That's okay. I, I, it's sort of interesting, but like, mm -hmm. if you have, a, if you have a, something in your remove list and it's not in your state or whatever you call that, then you just don't do anything. So, a delete effect is making something false. If it's yeah. already false, mm -hmm. that's, that's okay. fine. Okay. And you can see that reasonable people might differ about whether that's OK or not. Should you be allowed to make something false that you didn't explicitly say the initial value of in your precondition? Reasonable people could disagree about that. For this assignment and for this class, I'm saying it's fine. I'm an easygoing kind of guy when it comes to that. 